A few days ago, Kylie Jenner posted a video to her TikTok announcing a new product for Kylie Cosmetics. In this video, it was clear that she was trying her hardest to be super relatable by doing a what's in my purse video. In her purse, she had all the usual stuff that you'd find in anyone's bag, like a Rolex watch for her daughter, and of course, a bunch of Kylie products. In the end, she pulled out her new product launching soon. Okay, I had to make a part three because, because there was a lot in my bag. <laughs> These are my Butter Bombs. They launch on the 14th. I just applied in the last video. This is one of my favorite shades. Love that for you, but these are just, they're delicious creamy are super pigmented they last a long time and it was clear kylie was trying to go for the more relatable trend but it just didn't sit right with people we had people writing was this just a low-key commercial celebrities trying to relate to the common folks for a second i thought it was just a casual video nope just her showing a new product she's only active when she's dropping something and needs to promote and it just got me thinking about how much things have changed since the height of Kylie Cosmetics and how they're kind of in their flop era now. Today, I want to go over the rise and fall of Kylie Cosmetics and how we managed to get to where we are today. From people lining up for hours for a lip kit and selling out instantly, to no one really talking about Kylie's products and none of them really being a staple in people's collection anymore. Clearly, a lot has changed and we need to talk about it. It's a mess, so let's get into it. If you were a fan of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, or if you were just on the internet in any form back in like 2014, then you probably noticed a huge difference in Kylie's appearance and everyone was talking about it. Kylie went from having these more thinner lips to having very full and filled lips overnight. Every media outlet out there was talking about Kylie's transformation and what may have caused it. Obviously, the only logical answer was lip filler, but Kylie was only just turning 17 and that would have been highly controversial. Kylie and her team dodged every question about her lips and we were eventually made to believe that this was the result of lip liner. In pictures, I pout them out a lot, so I don't know. I love, I think big lips are awesome, so. I don't know. I feel like everyone's been talking about it for months. I know. So I'm kind of so sick of it. So I tweeted all that stuff like, okay, I'm not like, let's just stop. Let's get over the subject. But I love lip liner. I love overlining my lips. So yeah, yeah. Trying to get lips like Kylie became a huge trend online. And some people were going to great lengths to get her results. America's obsession with full lips, it's still on the rise. Last year, a lip implant procedure was being performed every 20 minutes in the U.S., so when we heard about an at-home product that claims to give you the perfect plump pout in one to two minutes, we had to put it to the test. Sure's <laughs> <was> doing it. <laughs> People were coming up with all these crazy at-home methods to plump their lips to the point doctors had to actually come out and be like, please stop, this isn't safe. Kylie eventually came out and admitted that her results were not only the result of overlining, but also the result of filler. When we asked our Remix readers what, what they wanted to know from Kylie, is they just said she has the most amazing lips. Tell us her secret. How does she get these beautiful lips? I have temporary lip fillers. It's just an insecurity of mine, and it's what I wanted to do. I'm just not ready to talk to reporters about my lips yet because everyone always picks us apart. A few months later, Kylie Jenner launched her very own makeup brand with Seed Beauty called Kylie Lip Kits. She debuted her brand with her very own lip kit, which had a liquid lipstick and a matching lip liner to overline like Kylie and get her look. Kylie talked about how she was so insecure about her lips and she would try to find lip liners that matched her lipstick, but it was always a struggle for her. When I was younger, I had an insecurity with my lips. I would go to makeup stores at the mall and just find like lip liner that matched my lip color and just would overline my lips. I just never found um, like a lip liner or a lipstick that matched. So I really wanted to make a lip kit where your lip liner and your lipstick, they match, they're in a kit, it's easy for people. So she turned her insecurity into a business, a massively successful business. On launch day, Kylie sold out of her lip kits in minutes. This is just so exciting. Oh she had hundreds of thousands of people on her website trying to get their hands on a lip kit, and before they knew it, 
every single shade was gone. Dolce is the first to go. Candy is the second to go. Hey! Hey! And Posey, Posey too. sold out. Yeah. Posey. True Brown and Mary Jo left. Now you might be thinking, wow, she had hundreds of thousands of people on the site, sold out within minutes, she must have sold so many lip kits and made an absolute killing. But that's not really the case. Kylie actually only launched with 15,000 lip kits despite the massive pull she had not only from their show, but also the platform that she was building on Instagram. They knew that they could sell way more than 15,000. It's not like this was some small startup business with limited funds to drop on development. A lot of people feel like they just did this to create urgency. People would feel like they were missing out on something that everyone wants. It would get the media talking about how she sold out instantly. After months of waiting, Kylie's lip kits have been released to the public. And if you couldn't get your hands on them in the first few minutes, you may be out of luck. It creates this false sense of urgency and fear of missing out. And it worked. It wasn't until 2016 that Kylie changed the name to Kylie Cosmetics with the plan to branch out into other cosmetic products. She had increased her lip kit production to half a million units and had a revenue of over $300 million. With the name change to Kylie Cosmetics and all the money her brand was making, Kylie began branching out into other areas of beauty, mainly using collections. Kylie wasn't gonna go down the traditional path of releasing a single product every month. She was dropping these massive theme collections that were really appealing to people. The only other brand who was really leaning into collections during this time was ColourPop. More on that later, but Kylie was drawing a lot of people in with these collections. She had the 19th birthday collection, Coco X Kylie, the holiday collection, Valentine's, Kim Kardashian, Kourtney, Kendall, Jordan. She literally had a collection for every holiday, every sister, every theme, and it was working for her. I love coming here and looking at... It is a mini museum, my mom's talking about there. I love coming in here and looking at all the collections, they're so cute. The Halloween collection, the 3D glasses. The Chris collection was definitely one of my favorites. With the little metallic glasses. So cute. So many people were talking about these collections, they were being reviewed by every beauty guru going, and I'm not gonna lie, they were really appealing. But as you guys know, with major success usually comes major controversy, and Kylie Cosmetics sure had their fair share of controversy. The first major drama I remember was the defective lip gloss applicators. Back in 2016, one of my core memories of Kylie Cosmetics was a video she released to announce her lip gloss kits. The video has nearly 20 million views, and it was honestly pretty iconic. It was like a short mini movie, and it had everyone talking and excited for her launch. Unfortunately, the launch ended up being a huge letdown after people started to receive these defective, messed up applicator wands. As you can tell, my wand in So Cute actually came defective. Jeffree Star was one of the most notable people to call Kylie out on her wands, and he ended up throwing them in the trash. Okay, you guys know I love Kylie, but look at this wand. This is a this is Kylie Jenner's makeup brand, and this is the quality. This is no hate whatsoever. It's just like when you're a multi-million dollar celebrity, why would you put anything out half-assed? It just doesn't make sense. Why are you a multi-million dollar celebrity and putting out something janky? Like, the wand should be good the first time, not the second time you make the new batch. So, no offense to her, but these are garbage. The next big drama that I can remember was Kylie's $360 brush collection. A lot of Kylie Cosmetics customers were teenagers and people in their early 20s, so when Kylie announced the price of her brushes, her customers were shocked. Jen Loves tweeted Kylie and said, Kylie, girl, these things better be made of authentic silver at those prices. You could have sold so many more brushes if you cut those prices in half. And Kylie ended up addressing the backlash, writing, I have developed for you guys the most amazing luxury brushes ever. I am very excited. Real brushes don't compare to synthetic brushes. Different performance, quality, everything. I am 100% down to do an entire synthetic line in the future, which will ultimately be cheaper. The best part is, when beauty gurus sat down to review them, they all agreed they weren't worth the price. Many of them criticized the cheap holder they came in. You actually get the brush kit just... I don't 
don't even know what this is. I mean, honestly, I keep seeing all the memes and the jokes and it's like, this is the ugliest brush roll I have ever seen in my life. Said she could have sold them way cheaper and overall just weren't worth the price. My thoughts are this brush set is not worth $360. The next big drama with Kylie Cosmetics has to do with what I mentioned earlier with ColourPop. When people started to receive their Kylie lip kits, a lot of people were noticing similarities between Kylie's lipsticks and ColourPop's. But I really can't tell a difference except for obviously the top being a different color. They look exactly the same. They had a similar smell. They had a similar feeling and consistency. Even the shades were similar. Can you tell a difference? Because in person right now, there's literally no difference. The similarities were so strong, a lot of people started to question why they were spending $29 for a lip kit when they could get ColourPop lipsticks for like $6. The similarities didn't stop there either. You could catch beauty gurus constantly comparing their products and it didn't stop at the lipsticks. A lot of people assumed that Kylie must be using the same lab as ColourPop, and the owners of ColourPop actually ended up confirming these rumors. Seventeen Magazine reported on the interview, writing, People have suspected for a long time that there was a link between beloved California brand ColourPop and Kylie Jenner's makeup line Kylie Cosmetics, and now it looks like we have confirmation. In an interview with Refinery29, ColourPop's founders Laura and John Nielsen confirmed that yes, their lab, Spats Laboratories, does make Kylie Cosmetics. To be fair, Kylie has never denied those claims, even posting an Instagram photo from the lab. Kylie also addressed the rumors herself and said, ColourPop and I are not the same. I have an exclusive formula that I created myself. We have the same manufacturer along with so many other brands. Just like how those big brands aren't ColourPop is exactly how my brand is. I really love ColourPop, I do, but we're not the same. Maybe not the same, but definitely a cheaper alternative. And I'm sure Kylie didn't love people knowing that. Despite all these controversies, Kylie Cosmetics was still ruling the makeup industry. She had pop-up shops where people would line up for hours, her collections were constantly selling out, and she even had vending machines put in airports so you could buy your Kylie Cosmetics while you're traveling. Kylie was truly everywhere, but somewhere over these past few years, things have started to change. Kylie Cosmetics has experienced a major downfall both in a business sense and in the way the public views her brand. Am I the only person who doesn't understand how Kylie Cosmetics still exists? Who is still buying it and why does she keep making new collections? I don't get it. Let's start off by talking about her downfall from a business aspect. In March of 2019, Forbes declared Kylie Jenner as the world's youngest self-made billionaire. They wrote, Kylie Cosmetics revenue climbed 9% last year to an estimated 360 million. With that kind of growth and even using a conservative multiple from the booming makeup industry, Forbes estimates that Jenner's company is worth at least 900 million. She owns all of it. Add in the cash Jenner already pulled from the profitable business and the 21 year old is now a billionaire with an estimated fortune of 1 billion. She's the youngest ever self-made billionaire, reaching a 10 figure fortune at a younger age than even Mark Zuckerberg, who was 23 when he hit that mark. But this title did not last for long. In 2020, Forbes posted an update and said they believe Kylie and her team inflated her tax documents to make her company seem more profitable. You see, in 2020, Cody bought a 51% stake in Kylie's brand for $600 million in what Forbes describes as being one of the greatest celebrity cash outs of all time. When Forbes saw that Cody had purchased 51% of Kylie Cosmetics for that much money, it confirmed to them that their reporting about her being worth a billion dollars checked out. That's until documents started to come to light. In a new article, Forbes wrote, but in the deal's fine print, a less flattering truth emerged. Filings released by publicly traded Cody over the past six months lay bare one of the family's best kept secrets. Kylie's business is significantly smaller and less profitable than the family has spent years leading the cosmetics industry and media outlets, including Forbes, to believe. Then there were Kylie's financials, revenues over a 12 month period preceding the deal, 177 million according to the Cody presentation, far lower than the published estimates at the time. 
More problematic, Cody said that sales were up 40% from 2018, meaning the business only generated about $125 million that year, nowhere near the $360 million that Jenners had led Forbes to believe. Of course, Kylie's reps denied these accusations, calling them all false, but clearly the sales records between Kali Cosmetics and Cody tell a much different story. After all of this went down, things didn't get much better for Kylie's brand. In June of 2020, Seed Beauty, the manufacturer behind Kylie Cosmetics, filed a lawsuit against both Cody and King Kylie LLC. The lawsuit alleged that Kylie had shared trade secrets with Cody and Seed was not happy about that. Forbes reported on the story and they wrote, According to the complaint, Kylie Cosmetics knowingly disclosed Seed's trade secrets, confidential intellectual property with Cody, the beauty giant that also owns CoverGirl, Remmel, and Sally Hansen, among other brands. While the highly redacted document doesn't specify the secrets that Seed doesn't want shared, they could include information on product formulation, information about the business core operations, and the structure of its partnerships. Seed Beauty also brought a similar lawsuit against Kylie's sister, Kim Kardashian, and her brand, KKW Beauty, just a few weeks earlier. Seed Beauty had also filed a lawsuit against Jenner's older sister, Kim Kardashian West, an owner of rival beauty brand, KKW Beauty. The filing is said to be asking for an injunction to block KKW Beauty from revealing trade secrets to Cody, which the conglomerate bought a 20% stake in for $200 million on Monday. So it sounds like some pretty shady business moves were going on and Seed Beauty wasn't having it. A lot of people were already suspicious that something may be happening with Kylie Cosmetics after the entire Instagram page was wiped clean back in May of 2021 ahead of the lawsuit being dropped. People were speculating that the brand was going out of business, maybe it was a way to garner attention for a new launch, or even a rebrand. A few weeks later, the answer was revealed. Kylie Cosmetics was going through a rebrand. Kylie was apparently rebranding by relaunching her company with a new, improved, clean, vegan formula. They also changed the packaging and design of the lip kits. They applied the new vegan formula to them. They expanded into brick and mortar stores. Kylie 2.0 was always in the plan. I've learned so much, so much more than what I knew when I started Kylie Cosmetics. Being clean and vegan and cruelty free and paraben free, all these things are really important to me now. You know, I want to just be really proud of everything that I released. And Kylie said that she was so proud of the changes that she was making with Cody. When the new products dropped, a lot of people made videos comparing the old formula against the new one. And of course, everyone had a different opinion. Some people loved the old formula and felt like the new one wasn't anywhere near as good, while others thought the new formulas were a huge improvement. I think the main opinion was that the rebrand wasn't as big as a deal as a lot of people expected it to be. I think people were expecting a complete overhaul of her products with new innovative launches, but that wasn't really the case. A lot of people feel like this revamp had more to do with the lawsuit brought against them versus just wanting to change some packaging and go vegan. So has anyone else noticed how Kylie Cosmetics Instagram only has one post right now? And when you click on the link for the website, it just says something is coming. You can't look at any of the products. Some are speculating that she might be doing a rebrand, but why? Is it because her manufacturer is suing her for misappropriation of trade secrets? And maybe this is why Kylie is being forced into a rebrand. Seed ended up dropping the lawsuit against King Kylie and Cody following the rebrand with one article writing, Seed Beauty has filed for dismissal of the case it brought against KKW Beauty and Cody owned Kylie Cosmetics, according to a report published by the Fashion Law. It hasn't even been two years since this rebrand took place, and people are already calling for Kylie to once again rebrand, saying her brand is dead and boring. Have y'all noticed how hard Kylie Cosmetics has been flopping lately? I've not seen a single person use Kylie Cosmetics in their, like, everyday, like, get ready with me, chit chats, whatever. And Kylie Cosmetics has failed and only attracts one-time purchasers and not long-time fans. So now I want to talk about the downfall of Kylie Cosmetics from a consumer's point of view. I personally think Kylie Cosmetics started to go downhill after her Momager collection came out. I remember when that collection dropped so clearly. So many people were so excited for it. It was gimmicky, Kris Jenner was an icon online, it was funny, people wanted this collab. You open it up and voila, isn't that beautiful? 
I never really bought Kylie Cosmetics before, and I could even remember I really wanted to buy this collection. Unfortunately, the quality didn't live up to people's expectations, and it got a ton of negative reviews. Okay, so if you can see on camera, I have blended this to the best of my capability over here, and you can see it's just like, they're very dusty, they're very ashy, they're not wanting to stick to my lid. This is not a product that I would release myself. I would definitely be like, no, this needs to go back to the lab, we need to work a little bit harder on this. Okay, so I literally do not see the blush. Like, I'm not even kidding. I do not see it at all. But like, it literally, hold on, like if I like get in there, it's on my brush, and if I go, okay, now I see it a little bit. That's a lot of blush to have to use to get a little bit. Ever since then, Kylie Cosmetics has just kind of fell flat. Shortly after, we were hit with COVID, which massively impacted the sales of cosmetics. And I also feel like the pandemic really put a lot of things into perspective for people. Why do we want to spend our hard-earned money on some billionaire who uses her private jet for short trips around the block? We've been talking a lot lately about the downfall of the Kardashians, and Kylie isn't being spared in that conversation. The truth is, Kylie Cosmetics doesn't exactly stand out anymore. The market is so oversaturated now, and the only product I can really think about being a staple for Kylie was her lip kits. Whenever she announces a new product, it's just kind of like, yep, nothing new here. And I'm not saying that Kylie needs to invent some new beauty product that's groundbreaking but it just feels so stale. Kylie has started to do her announcements on TikTok, showing off her products in an effort to seem more relatable, but there's just no passion there. Whenever Kylie talks about her makeup, you can tell she doesn't actually care about it. It's just a new product that she signed off on and she has to be the face of the brand and sell. I need to wash my hair. Before I do, I wanted to show you my little everyday makeup that I like to do with my glow bombs. So I have everything on right now. I'm wearing a tinted sunscreen, glow bomb shade pink me up. I just tinted my brows so I just gelled them up. No mascara and a lip liner. I always keep a glow bomb on hand. I have one in my bag. I just, just like tap my little finger in here. And it just like, it's nice and dewy. It adds like the perfect amount of color and I'm always reapplying because you can never have too much blush. I think Kylie and Cody know that people are losing interest because they've been quietly rebranding and trying to bring a new feel to Kylie's products. I don't notice Miss Jenner sneaking in a little rebrand lately. Following her collab with Stoss, it's been very subtle. They just started putting it on the grid. Her updated packaging, new font style. Okay, Kylie. And if you look close, it just says Kylie. And then underneath says Kylie Jenner, not Kylie Cosmetics. She sneakily just added it onto her website. I was assuming that this is gonna be a rebrand of Kylie Cosmetics, but it seems like she's trying to be doing a whole new product line in general, which is a little bizarre to be putting it on the Kylie Cosmetics grid, but then having two different websites for it. I'm wondering if she's just gonna dish Kylie Cosmetics and have it be Kylie and maybe do some other stuff too. I like the branding a little bit more, but I think that they need to be careful of making too many businesses. I mean, I think people are gonna be starting to get too confused with KKW rebranding and now this. I think that they should just stick to the same name. What do y'all think? But it's not really working, at least in my opinion, it's not really working. More than ever before, people are talking about the downfall of Kylie Cosmetics and claiming Kylie is in her flop era. I think if Kylie wants this brand to have any kind of longevity, then she needs to come up with some kind of rebrand and quit. She needs to find her passion for her brand again, the type of passion that we saw from her when she released her lip kits. You could tell those were something Kylie was really passionate about and proud of. But as time has gone on, like anything the Car Jenners release, it's all about money and greed and people are over it. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. Have you bought Kylie Cosmetics? Do you still enjoy it? Or are you a part of the huge group of people who think it's boring now and aren't interested in purchasing it? Let me know and I'll see you next time.